My name is Michael Kobas. I'm originally from Thunder Bay, Ontario, on the north shore of Lake Superior, just a few miles north of the Ontario-Minnesota border. It would not be an overstatement to say that artist Michael Kobas and architect Tina Rocha are considered heroes by the Philadelphia art world. They met while working at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, where Michael had received his MFA. After a while, we hit it off, and we've been together now for 22 years. In 2006, the couple opened Cerulean Arts, which has provided an exhibition home for dozens of artists who have seen their commercial galleries sadly disappear over the past decade. Michael himself was scheduled to have a show in April, but that's on hold due to the pandemic. And putting together this show has not been easy. A big challenge for me is time. Between my full-time job as Director of Continuing Education Programs at the Academy and running Cerulean Arts with Tina, I have to be very disciplined to keep my painting practice going. I'm interested in cultivating the creative impulse in others as an educator and gallery owner, but my own art making is the driver of everything. The work I'll be showing spans 20 years, so I guess it's a mini retrospective. My work is about looking at the world, but through something, whether reflections, photographs, or the fog of memory. I try and let my subjects find me rather than the other way around. I'm suspicious of trying too hard to make art. I go back and forth between watercolor and oil. My oils tend to focus on the past and take a long time. I build them up slowly with multiple layers to achieve a certain density. I don't want to finish them just to get them done, but to learn from them. Learn how to paint and stay with something long enough so it gets away from my intentions and becomes the thing that it was meant to be. While I was a student at the Academy, I lived at International House up by Penn Campus and worked as a front desk resident assistant. I got to know the security and operations staff pretty well. One housekeeper named Reggie asked if I would make a painting of his favorite train. He gave me a photo of this train and I did it. People saw it and responded positively, so I started doing more. One subject that Mike goes back to over and over again is the automobile. Now, I'm not really a car person. We don't have a car, and my family didn't even have a car until I was a teenager. The thing that I'm interested in is the importance of this object to a person's identity and the impulse to capture it in a photograph and cherish that long after the vehicle is gone. They become portals to the past, allowing me to bring the past into the present and find connections between my experiences and the experiences of others. The painting Nova depicts a friend from Thunder Bay with his Chevy Nova from a photo taken in the 80s when we were in high school together. I always thought the photo had been taken by his mother, who has since passed away, which made it poignant for me through the painting process. After it was done, he told me it was actually his girlfriend, now wife, who took the photo. That changed my feeling about the painting from a sad reminiscence to a brighter and more optimistic view of the future. Two young people embarking on their journey together in a jacked-up four-door Nova with lots of body filler. Truck at Dusk is my latest vehicle painting. It's from a photo I took in the 90s of my friend in Thunder Bay just before we headed out to the bar. The real point of the painting for me is the sunset reflected in the side of the truck, but to get it I had to paint everything else, including the wheel rims, driveway pavers, grass, and a full-figure portrait. My friend is also a lineman, so I spent extra time on those power lines in the sky. The painting Honda depicts me with our family's 1981 Honda Civic wagon after it had given up the ghost and we were about to sell it for parts. My mother took the photo. Northwestern Ontario is part of the Canadian Shield and the reddish purple rock color seems to infuse my paintings without me knowing it. Working in watercolor snaps me out of a nostalgic funk and brings me back to the here and now. Watercolor enables me to work much more quickly and directly and take more chances. 
However, I don't think I could behave so freely with watercolor without the grounding that methodical oil painting provides me. My watercolor subjects arrive through my daily travels when the aesthetic possibilities of ordinary places are suddenly made apparent, either due to some change in light or my state of mind. I'm more susceptible to these visions when my defenses are down. I capture these fleeting moments through photographs and develop them through painting. By allowing their essence to emerge over an extended time, Mundane views of parking lots, car windows, and reflective storefronts are transformed into something majestic and strange. Rearview is an ink watercolor gouache painting depicting the building next door to Cerulean, seen in the rearview mirror of the Philly car share I was driving that day. The painting resonates for me because we hadn't bought the building yet, into which we expanded the gallery. The smeary effect on the glass is an actual smear. I tried painting it about 10 times, but couldn't get it. Kept wiping it off. After one of those wipes, I got it. With windshield, I enjoy the mood of being inside this dark compartment with the scene rolling by outside, like a movie. In one of Charles Schultz's Peanuts comic strips, Charlie Brown is under a tree with Peppermint Patty, and she asks him, what do you think security is, Chuck? And he replies, security is sleeping in the back seat of the car. When you're a kid and you've been somewhere with your parents and you're on your way home at night, you can sleep in the back seat and not worry about anything. And your parents are up front doing all the worrying. That all changes when you become an adult and you can never sleep in the back seat again. This has stayed with me through the years. Even though my family never had a car while I was growing up, we rode the bus, biked or walked. I made lithographs for several years with Ron Weifels in his PAFA continuing education class. Since I paint slow, lithography allowed me to explore more subjects and make multiples. There's nothing quite like drawing on a litho stone. The crayon moves across the surface like velvet, achieving an infinite range of values. You can also scrape away to bring light back in. GG1 is a lithograph I made from a photograph of my own painting of the same subject. Making the painting was a long and arduous process, and I felt I was finally getting it just at the end. I wanted to extend that felt response by working from my painting marks and not the source photo. Printing in color, which requires pre-planning and color separation, affected the way I use color in painting. The paintings I'm working on right now depict the security camera views at Cerulean. I photographed the monitor images and then printed them out. Even though I use photos, I really need to know a scene intimately to paint it. I've spent years walking up and down those sidewalks, in and out of those buildings. I know what the light does to the color of the columns at different times of the day. I know the heat of the summer from being outside washing the windows, and the cold of the winter when I'm shoveling snow off the sidewalk. My process is not purely rational and methodical. There's plenty of weeping and wailing. If a painting is getting too fussy or stalls out, I do something impulsive to take charge again. I will flood it with black ink or color or scrub it with a paper towel in order to derail it, forcing me to paint my way out and forget the photograph. The great artists of past and present influence me, of course, but there's also TV, action movies, comic books. Anything and everything is grist for the mill. Artists that I feel a strong kinship with are Via Selman's Yvonne Jaquette, Charles Birchfield, and Alex Colville. Edith Neff is also on my mind these days after the Woodmere show. I wish I could have met her. In my circle, Bill Scott and Alison Syvertson inspire and motivate me, not to mention Tina. I used to constantly worry if I was good enough to make art that it was presumptuous of me to think that my efforts were good enough to hold up to the great art of the past and present. At a certain point, I just got over it and got down to work. Almost every day, without waiting for inspiration, the perfect conditions, or if I feel like it or not. That's really all there is to it. But it's not all there is to this video. The last word, Michael, goes to a friend of yours. My name is Bill Scott. 
I've known Michael Kobas for at least 15 or 16 years. After he and Tina opened Cerulean, I got to know them much better. I love the exhibitions they put on and the community that they foster and support. When I've worked with him or for him, he can really plan an idea and see it through. Michael really keeps you as part of the team. His paintings are that way too. Small paintings of big worlds. They endlessly unfold and reveal more and more. <laughs>